What's going on YouTube? In today's video we're going to take a look at the radio buttons. So the key of this tutorial is not to show you how to click them or how to get um, their state. The key of this tutorial is to kind of show you how to design support, how to create your classes, how to create your methods and functions for reusability. While you will understand how to click on them, of course, but you know, I urge you to pay attention to how you design your functions, your classes, so they are reusable and readable by other people in your company, because that's something that's being overlooked very frequently. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive dive into the tutorial. So here we have Trulia and they have this radio buttons on their home page. So we're gonna use these buttons and we're gonna automate clicks on them and we're gonna create some methods and functions to return the selected buttons to us um, so we can know what's selected and what's not. All right, so let's open up uh, PyCharm here. Let's create a new Python file. Call this radio button tutorial. Let's create a class. Call this radio button and create our constructor or the init. Uh, similar to how we did in the drop down tutorial uh, in the previous video, we're going to pass in the driver in here. Uh, for, simplicity, for simplicity's sake um, and then we're also going to pass in one unique attribute that's going to distinguish this radio button from each other so if you take a look if you do inspect right click and inspect on this element we can find what's common and what's different about it so at a glance we see that this button element has Pretty much the same class and different text so what we can do is we can try to find um, those buttons so we're gonna try to create um, xpath to find a button that contains class such as this and I'll just copy part of this class in here Okay, so over here with this particular X path, I was able to narrow it down to three results and that's exactly how many radio buttons we have on this page. So now I need some differentiating factor for those elements. And I already said it was text. So we're gonna put and text. Let's just see if this works. If we put buy in here, it does, finds, uh, does find this button. We can see here we have one result, so that's what we need. So we'll just copy this X path and go back uh, to our code, and we're gonna add another argument here to this um, constructor, and we'll call it text. So now we'll just save this to local variables. We'll save driver to self self driver will assign driver, and then self text will assign text and then we'll go ahead and uh, create the button object itself so now that we have the driver object here we're going to use it to find element by xpath and the xpath we already created so we'll just paste it in now the only thing we need to do here is we need to format the string properly so we're going to replace by with curly brackets and we're gonna do format on this and we're gonna pass in the text as the variable there. So the constructor is pretty much done. Now we can go ahead and create some methods uh, for this radio buttons. Now radio buttons are very simple. We're not gonna have a lot of methods uh, because the only thing you can really do here is you can select the button or you can get its state, right, whether it's selected or not. So we'll only have like two methods for this radio button class. So let's go ahead and create them. So we're gonna call first one is selected. And here we're basically just going to return um, 
so <clears throat> let's take a look at how we can tell whether the uh, radio button is selected or not uh, here it's basically all in the class so because this button looks pretty and formatted uh, developers made it uh, made this classes for it so you can tell that if if a button selected is part of the class that means that this button is selected like you can see that it changes it moves to different buttons as I select different buttons so that's one way to do it some uh, radio buttons will have um, an attribute inside the HTML um, element here uh, that could say like value equals to one or zero or maybe a property that's called selected equals to selected or true or false or something like that um, in that case you would use those properties but in our case we can actually use class so if you go back here I'm just gonna say whoops let's go let's go back here copy this uh, class button selected and we're gonna check or not really check but we're gonna return um, a statement uh, so we're gonna say button selected in self button get attribute and then we're gonna get the value of class right so basically what this is gonna do for me is it's gonna return this whole string and then it's gonna check whether this is inside that string and if it is it's gonna return true so our uh, method here is selected is gonna return true if this string is inside this string <clears throat> so that's that for that function now let's create a different function that's actually going to select the button when we want to and we're gonna call this select so this is pretty simple one because we already have the button created so we're gonna reference that variable and we're gonna call click method on that and then we'll return self once we're done clicking on it so now we can go one step farther and actually create another class to represent a group of radio buttons because here we have kind of a group so there is uh, some sort of relationship between this uh, radio buttons because when you select one uh, the others uh, get unselected so there's a relationship this is this button's a part of the group and actually you can see that um, they labeled it as a group here as well so let's create a class that will kind of represent um, a group of different radio buttons and let's call this radio button group and we're gonna create our init and all we need here is basically a list of radio buttons so I'm gonna say radio buttons and then we're gonna assign um, we're gonna create internal variable call it radio buttons and assign the values that we pass in here and then we're gonna create a method or function to get selected um, button so we're gonna call it get selected and um, since this is a list that we passed in we can actually do a for loop on it so we're gonna say for radio button in self radio buttons that's actually buttons okay so change this to buttons and then here we're gonna say if radio button is selected then we are going to return radio button text <clears throat> so remember that when we create this um, class when we instantiate an, um, an instance of this class we're actually going to pass in a list of radio button objects so because we're looping through a list of radio button object each variable here for radio buttons has access to this method that's why we're able to call is selected on it and then we're able to return the text um, property here which is um, which is not a class variable but an a variable of the instance right so it's going to be unique per radio button um, 
instance that we created. So I'll show you what I mean. So actually, if you go back to drop down, we can actually copy this code here and go back. Just paste that in. We need to do import on the web driver. And then we'll use Chrome and we'll need to change the URL here to Trulia. So we'll just replace that with Trulia. And at this point, we can go ahead and define our buttons. So let's see, we have buy, rent, and sold. So we'll just say buy equals radio button buy and then we also need to pass the driver inside there as well and then we can create the other two so we have rent and then sold um, and now let's go ahead and define our group as well so we'll say radio button group and inside this one we remember that this is a list radio buttons uh, we'll just kind of pass in the buttons that we have created there. So buy, rent, and sold. And now we can do. Uh, let's act, let's just print group get selected, and then let's use the button objects to actually select stuff. So we're gonna select buy and then print selected and then we're going to do kind of similar for the other two as well we're going to do rent and we're going to do sold okay so let's run this code and see what happens all right so it did something all right so it open the page by is selected by default so first print statement that we had over here actually printed by then we clicked on buy and we printed it again then we click rent and we printed the selected which was at this point rent and then sold so that's it for this tutorial guys if it helps you out make sure to like share and subscribe to the video thank you guys for watching and take care